so I got thrown in YouTube jail again for trying to share some uh, truth mafia information. This Tommy Truthful guy with Truth Mafia has some very interesting information. If anybody would like to go check him out, uh, Facebook's been attacking the shit out of him. He had this um, video about how the harvest has begun, like I've mentioned, and uh, they attacked him so bad he's getting he's getting his legal team involved with how hard he's being censored. But I uh, decided to do something that I don't like to do. And I took down a couple of videos that I made. Uh, response videos to somebody who said something that pissed me off. And I came across this chick who was guided to her page. And I'm going to start with this video. And um, I've kind of been taking this time out as a means to settle down and calm down and try to figure out things like how to alchemize rage and as anybody on my channel knows, I I look heavily to Solar Lion 144 for inspiration pretty much. He's kind of um, got his shit together and has been through a lot and has had a lot more time to figure his shit out. And a lot of these people have had a lot more time to figure their shit out and as a baby in this spiritually awakened game trying to navigate I've admitted before that I I don't handle myself correctly I don't have a very good control over my emotions yet and I have no problem admitting that. Um, a lot of these people that I look to, they don't have kids. And this has to make spiritually awakening and realizing that we're in a, a high-tech video game. It has to make it easier at, at some level. Because for me, having kids in this fucking world and the reason that this world is the way that it is and this is why our kids are in so much danger on top of being an indigo type 3, it is a very hard thing to do is calm the fuck down. And I look at all these people that I look to for inspiration and I just imagine, you know, if they had, if they reacted the way that I react to negative comments, I mean, these people are so much more well known even though they still have small channels and they have to receive shitty comments and if they reacted the way that I reacted they would probably not even have enough time in their fucking day to motherfuck people and I'm always going to be working on me and so I just wanted to bring this chick up because she seems to have a lot of information um anybody talking about the emerald war 
order and things like this, you know, I take them seriously. And, um, I am, I, I started watching this video, but I haven't gotten all the way through it or anything. Because I have a lot of shit going on at, um, at home. And... I am. I'm just trying to learn how to balance and conduct myself in a, in a better way. One of Silver Lion's last videos, he's just talking about how he's just in a great place right now and kind of like water off a duck's ass. Like, he doesn't let shit get to him. And you know, sees people out there acting chaotically, and it's not good. And that was kind of why I decided to take my couple of shitty videos down of me overreacting to negative comments because I don't want to be chaotic and I don't want to be so fucking mad about my situation and everybody else's situations so I'm kind of looking to people posting videos about alchemizing rage and stuff like that right now source admission support like thanks girl I'll get to that in the meantime, I posted this in my community section. I'm thinking, okay, what the fuck am I missing? Because I see all of these people out here. And I've seen, I spent months watching Ashiana Dean videos. You can go back to the beginning of my, my channel and see me wake up in a panic and go straight to Ashiana Dean. And go, this woman is out here telling everybody the truth. This has to be right. This literally all has to be right. Because when you have a spiritual awakening, if yours goes anything like mine, where it is like you are briefed upon awakening that what your problem has been your whole life is that you have a soul contract with multiple souls when you wake up and you realize that you are something called an indigo type 3 there is no way around it you are going to get cracked right to Ashiana Dean and Lisa Renee because they are the ones who speak about indigo threes. And when you are an indigo three, you have the memories of two ancient creatures and entities in your memory warehouse to touch back a little bit about, you know, a couple of the things I said on the videos that I took down because I, I didn't handle myself correctly. And I'm trying to learn how to grow and navigate. And it sucks. It really sucks when you have a whole bunch of people who know this information and will say shit to you when they don't like the fact that you're calling bullshit out. It's okay for these people to call bullshit on the Galactic Federation and on everybody else. But when you call bullshit on the fact that there is something very dark about Ashiana Dean. And you have it thrown in your face that you're an Indigo 3 and... How do you tell an indigo three that their soul is probably the one at the wheel 
because if you're questioning Hashi on a dame, enjoy going back to space dust. People need to understand that an Indigo 3 contract, that is a team. The non-fallen soul agreed to risk its ass to help the fallen soul come down into this hologram and help it. It is a team. It is not something where it's, oh, you can tell if the fallen soul is the one at the wheel or not because of characteristics like being bigger. When you're looking at somebody who's admitting they're an Indigo 3 and they're bigger, that's kind of a good way to tell that that's the fallen soul. That is bullshit. It, it's literally bullshit. And I honestly saw this girl on one of these spiritual freaking things I'm on. One of these support groups and shit. Put a post up a few days ago and go, hey, I don't know what happened, but I just went through a spiritual awakening and apparently... I'm here with a soul contract with a fallen soul and I don't even know where to begin and I snagged her up. I literally briefed this woman because this shit is happening to people everywhere and I don't know if this is how it goes for other Indigo 3s but this woman had a very, very similar awakening where she was just like, what the fuck? Like, it was revealed to me that I'm carrying a fallen soul here. I guess I'm fucking angelic, and I'm I'm carrying a fallen soul. It is the most fucked up thing to wake up to. And there is no way around it. You're going to find this information. And I'm looking around at all of these people. And I, I have. I've seen so many Ashiana Dean workshops, right? But they seem to have done a good job of scrubbing the ones that had anything to do with Michael Dean. And then I see all of these people starting up their own little Ashiana Dean teachings. And they're calling Lisa Renee speaker too, right? And I'm going, what am I missing? What the fuck is everybody missing? So then I thought back to the interview that I have on my channel of Sethic Kisposa, an indigo angel, talking about high suspicions that there was spell work over the beginning, even the, at the, even at the beginning phases of this chaos movement. And how Boza said something about the Michael Dean interview. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't know anything about Michael Dean. I know the people in these comments and these chats I've been in have said that he was some horrible guy and he was abusive to her. If you have spent countless hours learning Ashiana Dean material, why don't you see how your discernment, see how on point it really is and give yourself three hours to watch. And this is a, a listen to, it's not a watch. Listen to this interview, I dare you. Because Michael Dean was speaker two, and then there was a speaker three. And literally, this interview broke 
my fucking heart to hear these two men talking about what Ashiana Dean did to not only them, but to other KS members. Literally, she looks so much worse than Amber Heard. I followed that whole trial, and I'm telling you what, if you know anything about the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial, and you watch this, this woman accused this man of so much abuse out of nowhere. Her daughter tried to, um, allegedly, sexually assault him. Her and her daughter literally look like Amber Heard's on spiritual fucking steroids. It is absolute fucking insanity that people are out here trying to teach this material and either don't realize the Michael Dean interview and realize what happened here or they're purposely ignoring it and if you choose to do that that's on you but I'm gonna play it I mean the, the last the last hour of this video is so fucking wild and literally I cried I I watched this a few days ago for the first time and then I watched it again last night and I honestly coming from a woman me who has been abused I have been abused in relationships I have been abused sexually I I cannot even tell you how sensitive I am to women being abused because it happens a lot. But what this woman did to this man and probably all of her other ex-husbands, it is fucking mind-blowing. It is narcissistic. It is malicious. This woman appears to step on and stab in the back everybody who has ever helped her. And this R. K. Seeker of Truth has this video and two other ones that are fan in showing the other side and what this woman has done and is capable of about all of her flip-flopping to suit her own fucking needs. I, th this literally fucking tore me up. And this video only has 15,000 views. There are so many people who do not even realize because she's done such a good job of scrubbing him. What this man has to say directly. And, and this man, neither of these guys are talking about this out of malice. They are talking about this shit through tears and it took them like six years to be able to sit down and have a conversation about how fucking treacherous this woman and her daughter actually were and are to the people 
that uh, she's supposed to be helping and guiding. And the end of this interview is very interesting. It essentially links the birth of her daughter, the totally un unhinged one, as being conceived by both and directly links her to Thoth. And it really makes the probability that she has tagged her new information and is doing ritualistic mouth puking on people, probably in the name of Thoth, make a lot more sense. And this commenter pretty much threatened me over slander, defamation. I'm telling you what, I've called out all kinds of people way bigger than this bitch. I've called out Benjamin Netanyahu. And I am not fucking scared. This woman has a huge legal team paid for with the millions of dollars that she raped out of people presenting this information and come the fuck ahead at me is how I feel. This is fucking sickening. Further drive, bright, climb to the top of the external face of the pyramid to have made the climb alone. Now, that said, I'm concerned about my limitations and have before welcomed fear as a constructive tool, not least due to some of the experiences that I have had, often with or attracted by others. I shall never forget, for example, that after the Treaty of Altair was broken, while we were in the UK in um, September 2000, Ash was attacked by hyperdimensional soul trumpers, she said. I tried to intervene, but was not guardian ready. Her louche, that's to say her energy, her negative energy, her fear-driven energy was so compelling to those who were attacking her. It was really a fearsome psychic attack and got me thinking very seriously and for the first time about this question of spiritual hygiene and self-protection. I take it that you will understand that this business about loose negative energy is about feeding, it is interconnected like everything else, and especially by all forms of fallen entity, entities. As far as Mother Earth is concerned, this particular phenomena, notwithstanding other fallen angelic races, occurred about 500 to 550 million years ago as a result of an action by the Anu Elohim who consciously exchanged their genetic capabilities. They traded a minimum 12-strand DNA, Christos potential, quite knowingly into an aberrant 11-strand DNA mutation. They did this purpose, purposefully so they could be free from all source-centered obligations, choices, and options. How on earth they came to that conclusion, I just can't possibly begin to guess. But they enabled themselves to explore some seriously hidden options, free of source or founder interference, relying as they must on other life forms in other life systems for their, system, their energetic sustenance. The lowest conceivable frequency, the better. With great malice aforethought, the Anu Elohim ensured that the consequence of their serious degeneration could not be intercepted by the Density 5 Brennaway founder races, who would otherwise be able to incarnate into their race, into their race line, the Anu Elohim race line that is, um, and intercept whatever would entrain from their choice. The Anunnaki race was created, therefore, by the Elohim for three reasons. One, to specifically destroy the Turanesium angelic human race. Two, to facilitate the Anu Elohim demonic dark avatars 
incarnating into Anunnaki bodies to penetrate the lower densities. And three, to take control of, Earth, of planet, the, the planetary stargates of Earth. This had begun way back before angelic humans were seeded on Earth. The angelic humans were created to function as guardians, protectors and healers of the living time matrix. Mother Earth from Phantom Earth. Also to assist or facilitate biogenesis of fallen angelics. And that is precisely why the Anu have had such, or Anunnaki I should say, have had such a long, lascivious and incomprehensibly cruel focus on Earth populations for maybe 300,000 years. The regenesis aspects of our purpose has been a particular cause of difficulty throughout all time by insincere or dis deceitful parties engaging with a distinct lack of commitment which has meant that human progress has been retarded if not slowed to a standstill and in many cases gone into reverse due to further interbreeding and enforced interbreeding I should add and metatronic coding. Um, this has finally brought the many competing interstellar groups into some degree of unified expression to the extent that the United Intruder Resistance raised the war stakes in September 2000 to the most overt level, level ever witnessed. The Anunnaki spawn of the Anu Elohim had been active on planet Earth due to their need for gold, initially. Alki and his Luciferian Anunnaki strain created the Lolkus Neanderthal which marked the beginning of concerted acceleration of a long line of experimental interference with the evolution of our own species, as well as others, around about 300,000 to 50,000 years ago. And I should say that, interestingly, as far as deceptions or mixed or muddled agendas, that the Anunnaki entered the Emerald Covenant around about the time the, the creation of the first Lolchus Neanderthal strain was affected. The particular list of key stages and, and heinous Anno Elohim Illuminati deeds can be found in Voyages 2, pages 319 through 327. And I believe that Araeus Productions uh, can supply Voyages 2 in PDF form to anyone who wishes to acquire a copy. However, my speculation is more focused on the personifications, personality and character of one of the earthly leaders of what we are knowingly or unknowingly up against, especially people that occupy special positions, aka speakers. Toth, amongst many other things, is the only competing source of earthly teachings, just as the freedom teachings offer their own version. However, the Thothian Merkaba is curiously driven by Fibonacci rotation speeds and has no relationship with the crystal spiral. The suggested tetrahedral rot rotation instructions will not produce the results practitioners desire, that is, raising their evolutionary frequency and their path through dimensions 4, 5, or 6, but instead will deliver the soul to the hyperdimensional demonic residence of the Kirgal, that's the Anunnaki underworld, and in which the, the souls will be consumed in the Kerbala. I say again, Kerbala. Resonant with another Kerbala. However, to continue, this would lead to slow, slow consumption by, by supernatural entities termed jinn. These have been known for many years to the, the American, sorry, the Arabic and Af African races. Um, and uh, all I will say is, in passing, is voodoo is perhaps the most uh, known and obvious association between the jinn and the African races, but believe me, there are plenty of others. Um, 
jinn are a race of supernaturally empowered beings who have the ability to intervene in the affairs of people, races and planets. The Babylonians alone reckoned that there were over 600 of them, individually each one named, and they could be configured in magical rites to perform various um, tasks and services. If you want to take a closer look at what I'm talking about, the movie Fallen by uh, featuring Denzel Washington, 1998, I think. Uh, Literally. I brought up the gin not long ago either. It was kind of a a download that we are having a massive gin problem right now. And that movie Fallen where their time is on my side. Yes it is. These movies are showing people exactly how spiritual entities travel and attack people. And if you ever start figuring this out and you ever speak to a doctor about this, they are going to call you crazy because they do not understand the spiritual battle. It is so bad. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good illustration of what these bastards can do. Anyway, uh, returning. Uh, in original Gina Abul Sumerian, which is uh, another way of referring to the Anunnaki, uh, the word jinn, when decomposed to its original uh, photonic um, root, is hyne which means that which mixes power and fear, interesting enough. An apt description of how humanity has always regarded the reptilian race. In times of war, any effective tool is utilized. And as Sun Tzu would say, war is always won in the mind of the enemy. A quote that is hugely reminiscent of Tothian guile. It would appeal to him greatly. It is said that the lowest level of the Kurgal, the Kabbalah dimension, is the source of much conflict among the Anunnaki and the other souls that uh, become resident there. Whoever has the power in the Kabbalah necessarily becomes master of the other two dimensions, the Kurgal and the Ki. The ruler of the Kabbalah is literally called the Eye that sees all things and sits atop the inverted pyramid that is to say, he looks up, the eye looks up at the dimensions above it so it can always see whatever is going on and retains power and rule, rule at all times. In other words, this is a place where chaos rules and seems to rule perpetually. But I ask myself, where the awareness of such matters have been removed um, from the New Age paradigms. The spirit world is not given any credence anymore. Um, whereas just a few hundred years ago, it was recognized as a regular part of life that spirits like consciousness float around since they're elements of energy all around us all the time looking for opportunities to enjoy themselves, have mischief, um, and to generally ca cause chaos at whatever level is that the, their powers are capable of. So, these are much more pertinent to a war footing, but in an, in an unknown sense. And these are the unseen in, seen enemy that feed, on, feed off us. So, you know, it leads to some strange conclusions, like why aren't we starv starving them out, like removing our loving connection, uh, and to bring this, uh, this earthly misery to a rapid end. Anyway, put it as most simple, it is due to the systemic, systematic preparation to corrupt and manipulate humanity, which has been going on long before the fall of Atlantis. The architects found there, and I have thoughts in mind obviously, designed a world for humanity to forecast, plan and adjust using quantum computers or 
superior to, to quantum computers in our knowing. So the next multi-generational Illuminati steps are already laid down. How governments, mediums for mind control will evolve, die, be involved in war, war debt and population debt, identifying all and any opposing or competing forces plan for their eventual takedown within the overall plan so they can just simply proceed steam ahead at will. They always appear to, ch to be the champion of all points of view, all arguments, but in truth none but their own. This is what the Protocols of the Elders of Zion lays out and describes in some detail. The I had a video on my channel from months ago and it was me pulling up the video of the melanated lady talking about that book being the biggest bunch of bullshit and anti-Semitism and all of this stuff. And I had a video of it on here where I'm going, I don't know. I've never heard of that book, but in my opinion, that does not look like a conspiracy at all that looks like the main problem in this world and it was there for a while but when they gave me another strike on my channel because I tried to share something from Truth Mafia they no knock shadow banned me a little while ago I had some very helpful comments from commenters in my comment section that they just removed and then they went and they didn't strike me again but they took that video down too and I appealed it and they were like fuck you and that video is out all over the internet but I I put my my, my input in on it and I'm like yeah that specific book that looks like the truth and they didn't like that, <laughs> so. The methodology and de desired outcome for the Illuminati shadow supervisors. But remember, the object of such plans imprison all, all Earth life in ways that are designed to provide endless negative energy for every conceivable negative emotion and mental construct. Want, lack, lust, greed, power are all food for the Anna Elohim and the Anunnaki, who on occasion embody their own forefathers, just as the Zeta Grays will on occasion embody Anunnaki. It is simply logical that a vast planning and decision unit was created to execute such a grand plan which included consideration for Mars, Venus, Saturn, and Moon, by the way, which we don't have time to discuss in this. These are the products, the Ballywick of Toth, the holiest of the holies is the acronym, the most ubiquitous of all characters bar none in the long history of man and planet Earth. That is why love, for instance, and the union of man and woman, the key to life, a unique potentizing force it is a target and that is precisely why men and women are such a, a viral relationship failure. I've often wondered why the, fate, the, the FTs failed to make this more overt recognized point of all that we did instead of messing around with the twinning adventures doomed to fail. The myriad of names that depict Anki Toth Hermes have assembled an immense array of epithets. In KS terms, he is the only known FA that almost became Christed. But I'm certain a reflection of not only his forefathers, but of mirrored characteristics. This personality is explicitly associated with Mercury, which has as its altar the Lord of Illusion. This is an umbrella under which complex and multifarious conditions exist predominantly associated with panic, fear, and terror. Mercury denotes energy sent forth and therefore represents the wisdom, the will, the word, and the Anunnaki Logos by whom the worlds were created. 
The created nature of Mercury is of the sun. His association as the, as, as the word is the most evil and corrupt. Through such duality is expressed truth and falsehood, wisdom and folly, and therefore is the trickster. He has no conscience being creative. He cannot reach his ends. If he cannot reach his ends by fair means, he will do it by foul. He is the original legend of all things cunning. It is relevant and noteworthy that Aleister Crowley, arch-Satanist, black magician, founder of the Order Templi Orientis, Freemason, and author of the Book of Thoth, and to whom Thoth himself reportedly appears, as he did to John Below Melchizedek. Crowley's work is often indulged in interpretations for the Thoth Tharadek, but he in fact addresses Kabbalah in the widest sense, replete with a tree of, with a tree of life. So we must realize, accept that Thoth, a.k.a. Enoch, and Enoch was from the same collective of Thoth, Lucifer, Jehuti, Hermes, Horus, Ra, Azazel, Merlin, Quetzcoatl, Anon, Tammuz, Shaitan, Moloch, Nurgal, Baphomet, ah, da, 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 goes on and on and on. Truth is a pervasive and dangerous source of influence. His five Abrahamic religions, all sun worshipping, cults of root. And sure enough, all is connected through his symbolic omnipresent serpent, whether at home in the Pope's audience hall, as it is in the cult of Mithras, Gnostic Sophia, and the symbolic medicine and healing symbol, the Caduceus. Not for nothing is Toth known as the creator god, Lucifer, the trickster, Mercurial, said to transcend solid and liquid states, heaven and earth, and all symbolized by the serpent. He has assumed the name of the trickster due to his purposeful, purposeful use of ambiguity. From kinks and mutations he created in the human genome, which range from immense confusions in the male-female power base, to the human disenfranchisements associated with Illuminati, law, socioeconomic structures of immense polarity, caste, class-based systems, institutions, and their propagandistic nature, such as educational and scientific institutions, and ever-expanding agencies that restrict human thought and expression. For instance, the naivety that is now being considered as offensive to Muslims, etc., etc. All of these creations, I'm telling you, are the creations of the the, 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 the Anu Elohim Anunnaki Illuminati institution, group, organization, as a control mechanism, complete in every way that I've outlined here, to affect life on planet Earth, and therefore the potential for our success in the angelic human indigo mission. The beneficial nature of this undoubted talent brought by accomplishment beyond magic, alchemy, and mortality in shape-shifting. Note shape-shifting. He brought or introduced things like writing, the alphabet, geometria, astrological, astronom astronomical, biological, and metaphysical sciences, agriculture, especially irrigation. The Great Pyramid was a massive Nile Delta irrigation device, apart from other things. Um, he offered instruction on wisdom, the mind, thought, logic, reason, meditation, intelligence, reading, you name it, all the way down to designing constructs for democracy, communi communism, Christianity to Mohammedism, the laws of the land and life. But just one form, interestingly enough, of the value of exchange and associated debt. He was not going to release us from that. He was a dominant patriarch rigidly hierarchically, hierarchical, caste-based, totalitarian. But, we shouldn't forget, source aware, as, all, as they're all Anunnaki, they are. So, such is the infestation of every culture on every level for hundreds and thousands of years, 
and our Elohim are the Illuminati after all, through which stuff, according to the FTs, became almost Christed. Instead, he chose the Old Testament, Yahweh, Abraham, Moses, Illuminati, and the Freemasonry. Following the SAC of 22,346, Toth responded in furious preparation for 2012. First, he was offered and accepted as a speaker translator by the Iani Master Council in 22,340 BC, feigning to be cooperative, to be supportive of the bioregenesis and all that the um, Iani and the angelic humans were so anxious to develop. Um, but such knowledge as he possesses creates massive scope for unscrupulous deception, cunning, and wholesale misrepresentation of truth, anytime, anywhere. And this is best illustrated beautifully, well, no, not beautifully, um, darkly illustrated, by the way in which Toth led his own races, his own Leviathan antichristic king lines, into a Wasadak contracted agreement through a special initiation that would generate a real physical rush for his people, give them something to talk about, just as we would when we were doing texting workshops, but which in fact ensured an enhanced metatronic di distortion. This distortion ensured for all time that they would no longer ever again be capable of regenerating the Christos pattern that was, that was the thing, that was the target of the initiation. This introduced by Toth to his own people was called the Flaming Blue Sword of Archangel Michael and went down around 23,000 BC. So we see Thoth and Enoch flip-flopping with mystifying regularity. I dare say only in their view of attaining advantage. On more than 30 occasions starting when the Lulu were created in 246,000 BC when they first entered the Emerald Covenant Peace Treaty. Um, the most recent recorded events was in 1976 when Onkitos Luciferians activated the Anno Serpent Appin, that's the uh, Atlantean Pylon Implant Network. Uh, which are a crystalline microchip network, uh, which they hijacked from the Guardian technology. In 1983, Enoch raised his head above the parapet and petitioned again for an Emerald Covenant redemption agreement. In the meantime, they joined and, and left and joined and left and joined and left, which it's a curious thing that the uh, Iani and other uh, Christic councils um, I presume, I've always presumed that they have a, a much more mature, more evolved understanding than we do because it doesn't make sense at all to fail to put the foot down and say, no, not, don't go there, don't do that. But I have experienced uh, of this where, unfortunately, uh, I carried a vote in council, which led uh, this, this vote in council was due to an ultimatum that the Illuminati issued in which they threatened to destroy the habitat and, the, and all of the races with Odeticron. And it was going to happen unless we tried to stop them. And I persuaded council to go to war. And I don't like to remember it, but it led to the destruction of Aramatena. So this is where the connection between speakers one and so, when people talk about the, the destruction of Armentana and the destruction of Avion and a whole bunch of other planets, those were the memories that I had to wake up to instantly. Planets exploding, Lila being attacked. I had to wake up in so much fucking fear 
And within the last over a year, I had to look at what happened here at this level of density with my fallen soul and have admitted there was a battle that took place in which my fallen soul killed 451 entities here. And I had to accept responsibility for the fact that, okay, that was bad. It was not a good thing. And most of the information surrounding he and Elisha is so fucking distorted. And, but there was, there was a battle. And I'll talk more about that one day. But then I had to be able, it was like I had to be able to comprehend that and go, yeah, okay. That was really, really bad. And I understand. Then, throughout the last couple of months and leading up to December 12th, I got the fuller scope of how ancient Elijah, that's what they call him nowadays, how ancient that entity actually is, and why I have all of these memories of all of these planets exploding and and it, it's bad it's really bad like I'll talk about that shit more too one day but this is why when fallen entities want to go back to source and they want to stop they have to have an Indigo 3 contract to come back into this game and try to heal themselves. And I had no fucking clue before I woke up that I was an Indigo 3 or whose soul I carried back in here to fucking apologize because it is very bad. The shit that I have to remember is so traumatic. It is so shocking. Because me and my family were fucking murdered on Lyra. And he was absolutely involved. And I really am trying to do the best I can to understand all of this information and accept responsibility on behalf of the soul I agreed to come in here with. But it is also a team. And the only thing now that I am really trying to do is help salvage his name for all of the people who are walking around this world named Elijah because their parents like the name or, you know, that guy was their hero. He was very bad and petitioned the Guardians for an Indigo 3 contract to come back here and try to help. And I'm trying very hard to comprehend all of this information and calm down because I don't want to be a chaotic, emotional fucking wreck. And I really wish that the things didn't go sideways with my soul aligned spiritual cleansing. 
I think I'd probably be feeling a lot fucking better had I had that. And one of these days, whenever I get my money figured out, like, I mean, that guy probably won't talk to me anymore because I'm such a fucking bitch on here. And, um, but I am, I'm going to talk to somebody else and, um, one of these other couple people I have my eye on that do shamanic healings who probably haven't seen what a fucking bitch I've been on here freaking out, trying to calm down. But even with Enoch, like with Enoch petitioning them in the 80s, how does anybody know that Enoch did not end up successfully pet petitioning into an Indigo 3 contract in the early 90s is what I'm wondering because I believe he got one and it is what it is. One and two uh, crosses with Toth in an unexpected way you might think it gets close and personal uh, in some parts. Just a few years after Toth's dastardly deed, and that, I'm referring to the three defections from the Emerald Covenant, uh, which which occurred from 50,000 BC forward in time, he committed another dastardly deed, and this one is known as the Iani Massacre on Kauai, Hawaii. One evening in spring 2001, Ash and me shared some of our prior lifetime memories. Me hit by a laser cannon on Gaia during the Gaian Wars before being captured and painfully drained of my DNA. I mean, you can say painfully, all right? She recollecting a terminal event in which she returned to the Mineral Kingdom. And that was a result, I think, of the red pulse uh, that occurred in Sarasota when the uh, all the crystal uh, temples were destroyed and led to the, the high level of course from the beaches at Sarasota. That was 208,000, sometime around that. Anyway, a, a really striking and gradually painful memory was triggered. We, we began sharing more memories of the events that occurred on Kauai. Essentially, what happened was Toth and his entourage arrived en route to Nibiru, they said. They requested travelers' rights, and in, in galactically, there is a there is a, an understanding that hospi hospitality customs were a vital part of the cultures of the ancient world. So, if someone showed up on your doorstep and they asked for you know clothing, accommodation, and whatnot for a reasonable short period of time, that it would be granted, and so. Um, they requested travelers' rights, and the people followed these customs um, as even a sacred kind of codes of conduct, so it was granted to tough. The real purpose of the visit was to steal, the, remove our guardianship of CDT plate 11. That was what he was there for. They didn't reveal that to us. Ash and I were leaders of this colony of Yali. At some point, Toth arranged for me to be drugged, set up in bed with an Anunnaki princess. On being presented with this tableau, Ash was convinced by Toth, by some magical means, that I was behind some of the, some nefarious plan to deny the Anunnaki biospiritual remediation. He suggested that I was taken away for questioning. Oh Ash allowed this, so we would assume that she was bewitched. Really, we've given the history of Toth and what his capabilities are. So, Ash agreed. Off you go, ASAP, whatever I was called at the time. And so they trusted, they continued to trust the Iyani women were very innocent in their way. Meanwhile, um, I was taken off um, Toth persuaded Ash and many of the women that they could achieve great conciliation and further bioregenesis by making a return visit to Nibiru for a short while. 
So the arrangements have made fairly quickly. The wire has been taken away in question. But instead, I wasn't being questioned. I was being castrated. Because they didn't want me to be capable of any, any DNA transfer or anything else that could occur in regular copulation. The Hano agreed, the Anunnaki agreed to leave a contingent behind as insurance. That's very good of them. Our women, our Ariani women, left with Toth, who later caused Ash to marry him, only to discover afterward most of the women were chained to breeder slabs, where their DNA was harvested with unspeakable ferocity by the awaiting Anunnaki studs. Me and my men on Kauai were treated as game. The Anunnaki knew well enough how to prepare their sacrificial lambs. They hunted us down, they terrorized us, driving down our frequency, fully adrenalizing our blood, and in many cases, anally calling us according to their predilection. That same session, I believe, Alec Ash expanded the first narrative by telling me that when she was about to conceive Alexandra Shantizandra, she became aware far too late that her then partner was in full overshadow by Azazel, a pers personification of Thoth. In other words, she was conceived by Thoth in any other language. In her earliest years, Ash had said, Alexandra, Shanti Zandra, had regularly pulled herself into, into a, a, phil, a physical tension position, which is known as the wheel in Astanga, Ashtanga yoga terms, and stayed, stayed like that in her bedroom for hours. Now I know that in some areas this, this, this position is a sign of possession in certain parts of the world. Uh, whether this applies or not to Zan proved to be whether or not this applied to Zan exactly, I couldn't possibly say. I don't know. And this is all a speculation, bear in mind, I've already put it out. But she proved, nevertheless, to be spiritually deserved, in my opinion, and an aggressive child at best, as we mentioned here and there in the rest of the interview. Um, in, uh, while in the UK, 2003-2005, uh, as she grew towards puberty, and a tricky time for various influences. I really could feel her bile rise and fall, and I suspected that she was up for certain kinds of tricks, possibly that Groover had, oops, Groover had led her to. She was channeling the, the Great White Brotherhood, but it wasn't confirmed by third parties until multiple people commented during and after the Shasta workshop in 2006. During the same UK period, Ash commented quite often that Toth would pass through the walls of our rented property, trying to seduce her. Sometimes, I believe, using the guise of, of Pharaoh Akhenaten, to whom Ash had been married and bore a son around 1360 BC, Akhenaten Toth was ascending Anu populations and excluding others, presumably aware that the empty, the Amenti sphere was damaged and that put his chosen ones at risk. There's much more to that story, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep this short. There's only a couple of minutes left. This video's super long. But this interview is absolutely sickening. That daughter allegedly tried to sexually assault him and caused so many problems and helped her mother allegedly chase down men like prey who had money and who had take advantage of me written on their foreheads like this poor motherfucker. It is so obvious that this woman is so fucking overtaken. And in my next video, 
I'm going to take you to the next two videos of other people discussing how this interview made them feel and how her older versus newer material made other people feel for the ones on my channel going you have absolutely no clue what you're talking about nobody has ever talked about this there is nobody out there talking about speculation that Ashiana Dean is disgusting but there actually are and after I was totally triggered and handled my anger incorrectly, again, I've been being guided. I was guided right to R. Casey for truth. And I really appreciate him for making this interview readily available for people. Because if you refuse to watch this video... You are complacent in following Amber fucking Heard. If you know anything about Amber Heard, oh, just wait. Because what this woman did, Amber Heard could have taken notes off of her if she would have known who she was. Her trial, she, her trial probably would have went better for her if she had this woman teaching her how to manipulate the masses, let alone one man. Goodbye for now.